Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 6, Work and Kinetic Energy, Video 2. Today's topic is Kinetic Energy and Work Energy Theorem. The objectives are to know the total work done on a body affect the body's motion, its velocity, and the displacement, to understand the Work Energy Theorem, and to be able to apply problem-solving strategies to solve a work and kinetic energy problems. Total work done on a body affects body's motion. Assume uh, a block slides to the right on a frictionless surface. If you apply a force to the right, you are doing positive work. As a result, the block will speed up. If you push a block to the left, you will do negative work on the block. As a result, the block will slow down. If you push straight down on a moving block on a frictionless surface, the total work done by you will be zero. As a result, the block speed will stays the same. As you can see, if its speed is, uh, goes up, its kinetic energy goes up. If the speed slows down, its kinetic energy goes down. If its speed doesn't change, its kinetic energy remains the same. So the total work done affects its kinetic, uh, kinetic energy or changing kinetic energy. And this is work energy theorem. So the work done by a night force on a particle equals to change in particle's kinetic energy. So this is the equation. K2 means uh, kinetic energy after you do the work. K1 is the kinetic energy before the work is done. So the total work done equals to change in K. K is the symbol for kinetic energy. We can prove this. Let's use the first. Let's use the easy uh Assuming an easy problem is a constant acceleration. So for constant acceleration, we can use timeless equation to find A. Then to find a net force, F net equals MA equals M times this expression. Work done, total work done equals F net times distance. So we can multiply this expression by distance, simplify this. We get kinetic energy after you do the work minus kinetic energy before the work, that equals to the total work done. So kinetic energy, this is the expression for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy due to motion. Kinetic energy and the mass have a direct relationship. If you double the mass, you double the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy and the speed have a direct squared relationship. If you double the speed, you quadruple the kinetic energy. Now, with, as you can see, the change in kinetic energy equals work. That means work and kinetic energy have the same unit. As a matter of fact, we learned in regions that just not kinetic energy or energy have the same unit, which is a joule. Let's take a look at this example. Remember the last example in the last video? We have a farmer is pulling a sled. So this is the same example. Suppose the initial speed V1 is 2 meters. What is the speed of sled after it moves 20 meters? So here uh, is the free body diagram. Here is the tractor is pulling at 5,000 newtons at an angle of 36.9 degrees. There is a friction of 3,500 newtons. And there is the weight of the sled. And its load is 14,700 newtons. And there is a normal force. So using the work energy theorem, we have the net force times total uh, displacement equals the change in kinetic energy. So from this expression, we can figure out V2 equals to F net times S, that's the work, plus the initial kinetic energy, then do the square root. So what is F net in this case? F net is 5,000 times cosine 36.9 minus 3,500. That's because up and down force cancels. All the net force is in the horizontal direction. You have 500 newtons. The other quantity we need to know is the mass. From the weight of the sled and its load, we can figure out a mass. Weight equals mg, so mass equals the weight divided by g. You have 1,500 kilograms. So you get V2 equals 4.2 meters per second. There is another way to solve this. From the net force, we can find acceleration. Then from the timeless equation, we can use this expression. You will have 4.2 meters per second. This two answers are the same as we expected. So it is a good way to do it two different ways. 
So you can be sure your answer is correct. Another example, take a pile driver, a steel hammer with a mass 200 kilograms is lifted 300 meters above the top of vertical I-beam being driven into the ground. The hammer is then dropped, driving the I-beam 7.4 centimeters further into the ground. The vertical rails that guide the hammerhead exerts a constant 6 Newton friction force on the hammerhead. Ignore the effect of air. Use the work energy theorem to find the speed of the hammerhead just as it hits the I-beam. So again, to do this, we need the free body diagram. So this is a free body diagram of falling hammerhead. As the hammerhead falls, there are two forces acting on it. One is gravity, one is friction force. So the net force is the difference between the two forces. So if I use down as positive, up as negative, my net force will be positive, positive so it's the displacement. And V, V is also positive. Because the hammerhead is dropped, V1 equals to zero. So we can use, this is the given, net force is the weight minus friction force. The displacement is positive three. Here's M, V1 equals to zero. I can solve for V2 equals to 7.55 meters per second. Next one, let's take a look at average force the hammerhead exerts on the I-beam. So again, to find this, we have to draw a free body diagram. So this free body diagram, is on the hammerhead again. The average force hammerhead exerts on the I-beam is the same as I-beam exerts on the hammerhead because those are action reaction forces. So let's see what other forces acting on the hammerhead. There's still gravity, there's still friction force upward because the hammerhead is moving downward. And this is N is the force of the I-beam exert on the hammerhead. So this is the N we have to figure out. And we use, again, down is positive, up is negative. We use the same equation. In this case, F net would be 200 times 9.8. That's a weight minus 60 minus N, because both 60 and N are upward, which I define as negative. Displacement is positive because it's downward. And V1 is positive because downward. V2 equals 0 because it stops. So what n equals to? Substitute everything, you should get n equals to 79,000 newtons upward. So it's the direction is upward. Let's take a look at the next question. Comparing kinetic energy. Remember, kinetic energy is directly related to mass and direct squared related to the velocity. Also, the change in kinetic energy equals to the work done, the total work done on that object. That's comparing this to two ice boats holds a race on frictionless horizontal lake. Two ice boats has a mass M and 2M. Each ice boat have identical sails so that wind exert the same force on each ice boat. Two ice boat starts from rest and cross finishing line a distance as away so they have the same distance. Which ice boat cross the finishing line with greater kinetic energy? Well, so that's comparing the two ice boats. Initially, they are both at rest. So their initial kinetic energy is zero. And because they have the same force and the same displacement, so the total work done on both ice boats are also zero. Now work done equals a change in kinetic energy. So from that, we can figure out the final kinetic energy must be the same. OK, test your understanding. Rank the falling bodies in order of their kinetic energy from least to greatest. So two kilograms moving at five meters per second, one kilograms was at rest, and then had 30 joules of work done on it. A one kilogram body that initially was moving at four meters, then had 20 joules of work done on it. Or two kilograms that initially was moving 10 meters, and then did 800, 80 joules of work on another body. So what we have to do is to figure out each uh, kinetic energy for each one, then comparing them. So the first one is this, k equals 1 half mv squared. Second one was initially at rest, so k equals w plus k1, the work done to the body plus its initial kinetic energy, so we have 30 joules. Again, k 
K equals W plus K1. Initially, it has, has 20 joules of work done on it, plus 1 half mv squared, you have 28 joules. Last one, K equals W plus K1, but W, in this case, is negative because you did work on other object. You lost energy. You lost that 80 joules plus its energy, so you have 20 joules. So when you compare it all, you should have 4, 1, 3, and 2. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.